welcome to everyone. We're going to quietly sit for just a moment, and I laugh and I say quietly, Nina McVay, one of my dear friends, our <laughs> presenter for the day, says, Jeannie, there's no way you can sit quietly. But my name is Jeannie Delpit, and Nina McVay is going to be your presenter today, but we want to give a few moments for all of our friends to have the opportunity to log on to the presentation. So I'm Nina, I'm watching the numbers increase. Just maybe a few more seconds because we sure don't want them to miss part of this amazing afternoon presentation on ruler work and free motion quilting. So a couple more. It is hard to sit quietly. Do you know that? For someone who's used to having a chatter. So a few more, but I think we'll go ahead and get started. So ladies and gentlemen out there in our virtual world, we do thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for our presentation from Nina McVeigh. Nina has been with Bernina for quite a few years. We won't talk about how long that goes. We were young when we started, but she is an expert at free motion work, beautiful quilting, amazingly creative. If you've had the opportunity to see any of her previous webinars or even have to meet her in person, you'll never forget that experience. Nina, if you'll pop one more slide for a bit of housekeeping, Folks, you might see a sidebar on the edge of your screen that has some drop options. There's one, if you click on the question mark, this is how you would ask a question of us today. We don't have the opportunity for you to speak to us, but so just type your question right in that bottom box. It will appear up on my screen. I'll do my best to answer quickly if I can, otherwise, Every question will be brought up at the end, so anyone who happened to ask one, it can be shared with the whole group. This presentation also has a handout with it. Just below that question mark, you'll see what appears to be a piece of paper. So if you click on that, there's an adorable little handout that Nina has put together. She'll talk more about it in the presentation, but that can be downloaded and printed out for future opportunities. So should something happen, and you get kicked out of the webinar, don't dismay, just log off and log back in. I do note that I can barely hear you. Is there a setting for audio? Let me see how loud my audio happens to be. Perhaps it's on my end. And I'm gonna raise it up. Is that a little bit better? And you can always adjust your volume on your computer screens as well. But I think I've just increased mine and hopefully that will help a bit. So without further ado, remember, should you get knocked off or not be able to move forward, just log off, come back on, ask your questions. We're delighted to have you here. So Nina, I'm going to take myself out of the picture and let you enjoy the time with our guests. Have a good one. Well, thank you, Jamie. You are very kind. Uh, welcome, everybody. I am thrilled that you are spending a little bit of time with us today. I am going to be talking about ruler work, but first a little bit of inspiration. You know, sometimes we look at those quilts in, in quilt shows or, or maybe at your dealer's store or a friend's quilt and we think, oh, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so exact. Many, many times those designs are done with rulers. And so just to show you a little ruler work inspiration here before we get started. So as we think about ruler work, there are several options for us depending on what machine we are stitching on. We of course can stitch on a domestic machine and do ruler work on the domestic machine. We also have our table model long arm and our frame model long arm. Besides the machine, you absolutely have to have a ruler foot in order to do ruler work. For the domestic machine, the adjustable ruler foot number 72 is available. And I just have to share something with you I'm really excited about for any of you with older model machines. This foot is going to be available. And so just keep checking with your Bernina dealer. I'm not sure uh, the delivery of this foot, but, but keep checking and you will be able to have the adjustable ruler foot for the older model Berninas. The sit down or the table model long arm also uses the adjustable ruler foot number 72. But another option is the ruler foot 96, which is our long arm ruler foot 
that is available for the table model long arm as well. And then for the frame, you need the ruler work kit, which includes the base or the table, a ruler, and that ruler foot number 96. So with your machine and your ruler foot, uh, you will be uh, pretty well uh, pretty well suited uh, to get started. Before we actually get further into our presentation, I do want to talk about setup. So I do have a survey question for you as far as how do you have your machine set up for free motion quilting? So Jeannie, if you want to launch that survey, that would be great. My pleasure. I'm launching it now. Nina cannot see the screen, but you can. So she's aware because she presented the questions. So as we see, what is your machine set up for free motion quilting? On top of a table with slide on table, on top of a table with a large acrylic table, in a table with an insert, or on a frame. So we'll give a few seconds, maybe a minute or so for all of us to provide our answers. You are welcome to change an answer. You are welcome to send me a sidebar in the questions. We had a few friends last time said, well, this is what I have, but I also have this. So some of you are blessed to have two systems. Kind of jealous there about that. <laughs> We're about 70% voted nine. I'm gonna give a few more seconds, not quite a minute. Yet. Okay, okay. My mom would be so proud. I'm really being good and quiet. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. Oh, we're around 80 plus percent voted. I'm going to maybe take another five, 10 seconds. And I, let those of you click. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Nina. I was just going to say, I know these scenarios may not be exactly what you have, but, but close to it. Just. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here is what we have. I will show the slide that your attendees can see, but you cannot, Nina. So let me share. And the results for you, Nina, are 30% on top of a table with a slide on table, 7% on top with a large acrylic table, 59% in a table with an insert. Wow. wow. And 5% on a frame. So that is really exciting to see what the results are. So I'm going to hide the poll and I'm going to let you okay. move forward with your presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jeannie. Um, it is exciting that 50, whoops, I'm advancing here. It is exciting that 59% of you are working with your machine in a table, whether that be a domestic machine in a table or a table long arm because you have a nice flat surface and that is so important when it comes to ruler work especially uh, you've got that flat surface and nothing's going to um, hamper the movement of of your fabric and ruler and so that is the best case scenario now i know not everyone can have that so uh, some of you a few of you have a large acrylic table around your machine when your machine sits on top of a table, the only thing I am concerned about there is the height, your height as far as um, in relation to the machine. So if you have an adjustable chair, that works well. That acrylic table, anytime you have a, a table, whether it's the acrylic one or the slide on table, there's, there's an end to it. There's a limitation to it. Uh, so you always have to be aware that you're not getting drag if you're doing a larger quilt that, that's not dragging over the edge of your table. So the larger table is good. The slide on table would be what I would say would be my last resort. Um, it is smaller. I mean, it's a nice size slide on table, but it still is smaller than the acrylic table. My concern with a slide on table is it has those wonderful rounded edges that make it nice for fabric to slide up and into the machine. But when you're working with rulers, those rounded edges can create a problem. 
if a ruler is, even if you have a six or seven inch ruler and you are holding it against the foot and you've got a rounded edge, it can uh, wobble. And with that wobble, it can easily kind of work its way into maybe over the top of the foot, get hit with a needle, chip the ruler, break the needle, um, and bad things can happen. So if that is your only option, a slide on table with your machine on top of a, a table, just be aware of that so that you are careful about how that ruler is being handled. Along with that setup, uh, as we go through each of the scenarios, I can look at, I want to look at the Q series on a frame. Um, as I said, you need a ruler work kit that will include the ruler base, so you will attach that to the machine. And then the ruler foot number 96. And as far as setting it up, select needle stop down, BSR2. And what I love with my Q24 on my frame is that I can take one of those handles and totally get it out of the way so that I have total access to the needle and foot area, making it very easy to manipulate rulers on the frame. With my Q-Series in a table, uh, we will attach the ruler foot number 96 or the adjustable ruler foot number 72. I said that you could use either one and then select needle stop down and BSR2. Now you notice that I mentioned BSR2. With a Q-series machine, you still have the availability of your stitch regulator, unlike the domestic machine where you don't have stitch reg regulation. So um, that is a big difference as far as working on a Q-series machine and a domestic machine. Again, on the Q-series, you have stitch regulation. On a domestic machine, you do, not, you do not. So your learning curve on the domestic machine may be a little greater. As far as setup of the domestic machine, you're going to select your straight stitch, attach the ruler foot number 72 to your machine, and lower the feed dogs. Now, some models do this automatically when they detect that, um, that free motion foot. Attach the straight stitch throat plate. I find that this does perfect your stitch. Select needle stop down. And if you have the hover function on your machine, uh, please turn it off if, uh, if that's applicable to you. I have mentioned that I wanted you to select needle stop down and that's very helpful. So when you stop to readjust your ruler or move your ruler, uh, and the, you want the needle down so the fabric doesn't move. But if hover is on, that foot is going to hover and then the ruler can easily slide underneath the foot. So to turn that uh, function off, you would go to your setup menu, sewing settings, the program buttons and icons, and then the presser foot position with needle set down. And select the first option as you see here so that your foot does not hover. The next thing we have to do is to, on the domestic machine, is to adjust the height of the sole on the adjustable ruler foot. So when I put this on my machine, I would turn the height adjustment dial until the sole is in the lowest position. So it's going to be all the way down. And now we're going to set it for the thickness of your quilt or your, your batting. The range is about a sixteenth of an inch. So what you want to do is check the height of the foot in relation to the fabric, put the fabric under the foot. The sole should just touch the fabric and then the fabric should easily glide under the foot and test this over your seams as well because you don't want to be quilting, get to a seam and realize that that sole should have been a little bit higher. If the height, uh, if you are using a very thick batting, if the height is um, well, let me go back a step. Uh, if the height is too high, the result is thread loops and skip stitches. So you do want to make sure that that sole is uh, where it should be. What I wanted to say is if you're using a very thick batting and that height is doesn't seem to be enough, we can, whoops, we can affect the height of the presser foot by using the uh, presser foot pressure menu. 
So on the Bernina 7 and 8 series machines, the foot actually raises and lowers as you raise and lower the pressure of the presser foot. I have never had to do this. I have never had a batting so thick that I had to go in and raise that foot a little bit more. But I do want you to know that it is something you can do. To adjust the height in the presser foot pressure menu, select the plus and minus or use the slide on the screen. And you're going to move the adjustment to either from minus three to minus 25. And you, as I said, on the seven and eight series machines, you'll actually see that foot move. I want to mention this because uh, Bernina machines have a wonderful feature called a hopping mechanism. And this is what makes our free motion so, so good. It, the hopping mechanism actually uh, helps push the fabric off the needle and uh, it keeps machines from having skip stitches and so forth in their free motion. But in ruler work, that means the foot is hopping up and down just a little bit. And for some people, this is a distraction and it bothers them. So that if you wanted to turn the hopping off, you could also use this uh, presser foot pressure menu and turn the pressure down to below minus three. And you will notice that the foot no longer hops. Just a little information to tuck, to tuck away in case that bothers you. I wanna talk about rulers. There's a whole world of rulers out there. Bernina has two ruler work kits. One is the ruler kit for sit down models and one is the ruler kit for frame models. I do want to let you know that these are totally interchangeable. They don't necessarily have to be used on one model or the other. You will notice that there are circles and ovals. The difference here is that in the sit down model uh, kit, you would stitch inside the oval or inside the circle where on the frame model, you'd be stitching on the outside. We have a straight edge ruler in the sit down uh, kit that straight edge ruler came with the ruler kit um, with the slide on table and foot. So very interchangeable, but it's, I do wanna note that these rulers are all traditional long arm rulers. So they are a quarter of an inch thick. The quarter inch thick rulers will work all the way around our ruler foot. With the onset of so many people wanting to do ruler work at domestic machines, not all ruler feet can use a quarter inch thick ruler. So the companies came out with a thinner ruler and it's 3 16th of an inch. Because you can use the quarter inch thick ruler, that is what I would stay with. They are more durable. And I think that uh, there's less chance of a ruler slipping under a foot when it's a quarter of an inch thick. So just stick with quarter inch rulers. We are going to start with the straight edge ruler. And this is the one that's in um, our kit. And it's an extremely versatile ruler. It's got a straight edge. It has um, your two and a half inch circle at one end. And it has a 45 degree angle at the other end. So as we start with this ruler, before we can actually use it or any other ruler, you do want to think about what are you going to put on the back of that ruler to keep it from sliding. So there's lots of different products out there. I have all of these, all four of these products in my sewing room. I use them all for different reasons or different purposes, depending on the ruler or what I'm doing and what machine I'm at. Uh, the stable tape is a rubberized product that you stick on the back of your ruler. Just cut it in whatever length you want, and that works well. The handy grip is a sandpaper type product. Again, just cut it in the length that you want for the back of your ruler. The only thing I'd say about handy grip, while it's a great gripping uh, product, you do want to be careful because it is sandpaper and it will scratch your table and it will scratch other rulers if you stack one ruler on top of another. The true grips are probably the least, uh, provide the least amount of gripping, but depending on what machine you're at and what your preference is, that's also an option for you. And then the grippy 
coating. The grippy coating can be sprayed on the back of the ruler. And then if that's not enough of a grip, you can spray it again and spray it again uh, until it's enough of a gripping surface. So let's get started. What I like people to remember when they start with ruler work, I just want you to tuck this in your head. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Because there are three things that I feel are very important that you do before you go. And they are really um, safety precautions. So number one is pulling up your bobbin thread. You don't want that thread to get tangled in the underneath your quilt. So number one, pull up bobbin thread. Number two is lower the needle. And number three is lower the foot. And then you can go. So one, two, three, go. We're ready to start quilting once those things are done. And again, this is safety so that you don't accidentally, without thinking about it, if you didn't put your foot down and you put your ruler next to the needle, you, of course, would uh, stand the chance of hitting the ruler, breaking a needle, uh, whatever. So one, two, three, go. We've got the ruler next to the foot. When you start, you want to place your hand on the ruler so the ruler doesn't move. Hence, the gripping surface. Uh, don't press against the foot too hard. If you press against the foot, it can make it difficult for you to move the fabric, or if you are at a frame, it can make it difficult actually to move the machine along the edge of the ruler. Don't press down too hard, same thing. It can make it difficult for movement. The edge of the ruler is just a guide. You are softly guiding your foot along the edge of the ruler. As far as holding your ruler in place, uh, when you first get started, what you want to remember is you want your hand to stabilize that ruler where the work is being done, where you are stitching. So on this particular straight edge ruler, if your hand is placed where my hand is, I'm going to stitch about halfway down and stop and then move my hand down further so that I'm going to stabilize that part of the ruler. Now with this particular ruler, uh, and depending on the size of your hand and um, the strength of your hand, you might be able to put your entire hand for the full length of the ruler. So you'll just have to see how that works for you. But what you don't want is to have your hand on the ruler run the machine or run down to the other end of the ruler and still no, have no stabilization at the other end because that's when the ruler will start to wag back and forth and um, you're not going to be stitching a straight line and hopefully you are not going to be um, running into the ruler. So again, it's important to stabilize that ruler against the side of the foot. Stitch down the edge of the ruler and when you get the length that you want, now again, you'll never see really long rulers. I think one of the questions people ask is, what if I want to do a 12 inch line? This is only a six inch ruler. Well, exactly, a 12 inch ruler would be too difficult to handle. So you're always going to have a shorter ruler and then you would just stop and move the ruler along until you get to the length of line that you would like. To stitch the next line, if you are stitching lines next to each other, you're just going to move over. If you are moving over a quarter of an inch, that's easy because the edge of the ruler foot is a quarter of an inch from the needle. So you can eyeball that very easily and see that, yes, I'm a quarter of an inch over because the edge of my foot is even with the line that I just sewed. Put your ruler uh, against the foot and the edge of the ruler against the previous sewn line and you're ready to stitch your second line. Now I stitched coming towards me and to stitch my next line of stitching, I'm going to stitch away from me. Resist the temptation to turn your fabric. Um, it's fine if you have a quarter, a fat quarter that you're practicing on, but if you have a real quilt, you do not want to be turning that quilt all the time. So get used to going forwards and backwards. And you'll see um, in the last picture here, the two rows of stitching. But what if I want to space my lines further apart? Well you're going to, again, either eyeball that or use your ruler if there are markings available on the ruler where you can mark over half an inch. 
you might even mark your fabric if you know that you're going to be marking half inch lines you can put a little mark every half inch or there's also uh, tools that will measure that for you as well so straight lines are easy uh, they are where I would begin if I were uh, uh, brand new to all of this. I would try doing some straight lines. Straight line quilting uh, can really produce a lot of wonderful designs. Here, um, as I said before, you're going up and down, and now I'm going to practice going back and forth because you also want to not just do vertical lines but horizontal lines. And then if you look in this middle picture here, you'll see that I have laid the 45 degree angle of the ruler on one of my straight lines and now I can do a 45 degree angle. Okay. And you can see by doing a few straight lines and filling in with a 45 degree angle, what a nice border pattern that makes. So as I said, straight lines really do create nice designs. I have some here. Uh, these are designs that I got from the AQS blog. They did have a blog with 25 churn dash block quilting designs. So I used our Bernina software and created a churn dash block with color in it and, and laid these designs over the top so I could see what they would look like on an actual churn dash block. And I think they look pretty good. Again, if you just want to start with straight lines, there's there are plenty of options for quilting with straight lines. Once you've gotten used to those straight lines, we're going to look at doing curves. As I said, this is a very versatile ruler. So now I'm going to use the end of the ruler, the curved end, where I said was a two and a half inch half circle. If I measure it, it's two and a half inches. But if I use it, remember, I'm going to be a quarter of an inch away from the ruler. So actually, it's the perfect size for a three inch block. So I have four, a four patch made up of three inch blocks that I have just simply drawn on my fabric for practice. And I'm going to use this ruler to create the design that you see there. When you create this design, one of your goals is to do the whole design without stopping to tie off your thread and starting over again. So you do have to kind of study it and figure out your path. I have a video in my next slide that I'll play for you and you will see what my path was, but it doesn't mean it's the only path. And if you are doing this and you kind of back yourself into a corner and say, oh, I forgot to do that part of the design, well, you're just going to tie off your thread and tie on again and uh, finish the design. So let's look at the pathway uh, that I took. I start up in the corner and come around to the side. And now I'm going to go across the center of the four patch and then turn my ruler and come back across and actually I'm making circles in the center of that four patch. I'm going to come back down the side and then I'm going to go across the bottom edge of my four patch. Up the side, if the ruler doesn't slip, it's a perfect design. And then across the top, but before I complete my design, I'm going to do the um, middle. So I have to come down the side and up the side, and then I am going to finish that design. So that's what the design looks like when it's all done. A fun design to do. I can do that same design with a ruler and use a different arc or a different um, it's not, it doesn't quite meet in the middle. And that's going to give us a totally different looking design. So when I compare the two, they are exactly the same method, but because of the arc that we are using, whether it's a full half circle or whether it's just a portion of a circle, it does give us a completely different look. As we do curves, we have to talk about circles. The nested mini circles in the 
sit down ruler kit do circles from one inch to four inches. So I have drawn a crosshair on my fabric. This may be the center of a block if you're doing something um, on a quilt or, or a pillow. And I have started in the very center and I have done a circle above the center line. I'm then going to do a circle to the side, to the bottom, and again to the side without ever having to break my thread. I want to do more circles, so I am going to take that um, first ring and I'm going to remove it. Again, I do not have to break my thread because there's a cutout in that circle. And then at the top of that uh, picture, you can see that I have removed what is called the key in this ruler. I've turned it counterclockwise and that portion, uh, when I put it back in, will complete the next size circle. And we will just keep doing that uh, removing the ring and turning the key counterclockwise until we have sewn all four circles. And this is what I would consider my spirograph design. Some of you remember playing with a spirograph when you were a child. And so now you can do those same things on the, uh, on the machine. So as we look at doing curves and circles, and of course we did the straight lines, we can combine those designs to create uh, more designs. And again, this is from that same AQS block. You may wanna take a look at that, but here you see I have straight line design, uh, quilting and then I've added curves and or circles to those designs. Kinda wants me, oh, makes me wanna go and so a churn dash block so I can play with rulers and create some of these designs. I have actually put four blocks together because if you were doing a quilt, uh, I want to, I kind of want to see how these all work when you put them together. So this is one of the designs. I really like the way that all comes together. You kind of get secondary designs in there. And then let's look at another design. Again, with those corners, you get secondary designs when it all comes together. And if curves weren't your friend and you want to stick with just straight lines, well, then we still have just the straight lines, a lot of grid work. Just remember when you do grid work, you don't have to, I would suggest that you do your lines further apart and then fill in so you don't commit yourself to doing lines that are very close together and then decide, mm, that's more quilting than I wanted to do but this looks great and it's just again straight lines i did uh, Jeannie did mention that there is a handout for uh, this presentation i did a handout with a pot holder i figured that if you've never done ruler work before you may want to make something small and certainly a pot holder is small and the other part of that is if you do this and you're practicing your ruler work and things don't go quite as you would like them to, it's only a pot holder and uh, it's still a usable item if, if you wanted to um, complete the project. When I put this together, I did want to test the products that I listed on your supply list. So um, I did layer them I used a product called uh, by Pellon called uh, 975 insole fleece. And I found that if I layered that with the shiny side out, so in this center picture, you can see that I have laid my pot holder back with the wrong side up. I've layered my insole fleece with the shiny side towards the back, towards the outside. I have a layer of warm and natural, and then another layer of the insole fleece with the shiny side uh, facing up, and then I will just layer my nine patch, which is what the top of the pot holder is on top of that. If you use any other product, that's fine, just test it. I tested this, I even went into my kitchen, which is a rare occasion uh, when I do that, but I did test it, and it does keep the heat away from your hands. Uh, so test whatever it is you're using. I don't want you to burn your hands and not be able to do your quilting or your ruler work. So very simply, this is a nine inch block 
or a, I'm sorry, a nine patch block surrounded by um, your border. And I did grid quilting in the center. So your straight line ruler just from corner to corner and then corner to corner of each block. So just a little practice with doing grid quilting. And then the outside edge in the border, we just did straight lines from the nine patch out to the edge. And again, just practicing your spacing and your straight line quilting. And then also the corner, how to handle those corners by marking a diagonal from uh, center out and then doing that straight line and, and turning it at the corner. And then I also have given you the instructions for binding your pot holder, making a loop, and even finishing that binding with the machine. So it's really a, a quick project, and yet it does give you that opportunity to practice your ruler work. There are other um, support materials available. So as we went through the presentation today, with getting started, you could also go to our Just Quilted uh, Ruler Work for Quilters ebook. This ebook is located on the Bernina website. And you'll see as you look at the picture uh, here on the front of the ebook that I have done the same technique. So you see, um, instead of a four patch, it was a nine patch. And we use that same technique of going around the entire piece with an arc. Instead of circles spirographing out, I use the ovals spirographing out. So uh, again, all of the information I gave you here in this presentation would be in that ebook. And while our ebooks usually don't include a project, this one does include the instructions for the table runner. We also have a project on weallsew.com. This is Bernina's blog. And this is a pillow project that I have done, and it is posted with a video on doing this particular project. But you can see straight lines, circles, and curves. So really fun to create. And as you get started with this, you'll create your own design simply by placing those rulers on your fabric and deciding that, gee, I might want to do this with uh, this arc or this curve. So play with that. Then right now, we also have a quilt along um, in process. We just posted the third one. There, there will be nine posts for this. So every month, I will be posting a another design. All of the projects are done on a nine patch. So at the end of all of this, you will either have uh, nine blocks to make into pillows, or you will have nine blocks to make into a 60 inch by 60 inch throw and I will give you instructions for either the pillows or the throw. But every, every post or every blog uses a different ruler. I really do want to expose you to what's out there. There are so many rulers, and I think that you'll find every time you uh, stumble upon one, when you see what it does, that's the ruler you're going to want. I have also made sure that with each post, there is a roadmap for the quilting, so it's a little bit easier to see as you plan um, how you're going to quilt this. If you aren't going to follow my instructions, you certainly don't have to, but I just really wanted to expose you to the different rulers. So with that, Jeannie, do we have any questions? Nina, we do have some questions. We certainly okay. do. Now, I'm going to sort of present myself as one of the question askers. And this is because I'm a garment sewist and perhaps I'm helping somebody else out. What is a churn dash block? <laughs> churn dash block. <laughs> well, it, it's not like a butter churn or anything like that. Um, the churn dash block is simply a, a block. Uh, a pattern that is a very traditional pattern and um, as you become more invested in the quilting world that is just a block that you see often very common block 
Okay, thank you. And for those of you who might not have known, I hope I asked for you on my, on my <laughs> behalf. So uh, another question real quick is, and this is a bit of housekeeping, is this information going to be available later? And yes, it is. We have recorded this presentation and on the Bernina website under, I believe it's Learn and Create, you'll go into the quilting part of it and you'll look for the recordings. There under recordings, you'll find the link. The link will take you to YouTube as that's where the video will live or the webinar will live, but you can always go to the Bernina site for new webinars as well as find the recordings for the ones that we've done. So that was there. Nina, will the wonderful 74 foot work on the domestic machines? Are delightful, is it the cup foot? The 74 foot mm -hmm. is actually designed for the domestic machines. It's the cup foot. It's an adjustable foot, just like the ruler foot. So yes, absolutely. It's a wonderful foot for your domestic machine. And that also is for your frames as well too, correct? Because it's designed um, for that. It's, tell me about that. Really, that was a big, tell me. It's please. really, well, any free motion foot that Bernina has does fit on the Q series machines or you know your Q, your Q series machine on a frame. It doesn't mean it's always the best choice. Okay. And so what I would tell you is the while the while foot number 74 is a great clear foot with that wonderful cup to it, my choice at the frame would probably be the cup clip that we have available for the ruler foot. And the purpose of that is so that your machine doesn't pick up the edges of your quilt when you are quilting, especially on a frame edge to edge. Okay. So that cup clip serves that purpose. Um, the 74 foot is nice because it's clear and it's not that you can't use it on the frame. I would just, um, it, I think the cup clip is a better option if that is the purpose of using the foot. But 74, the, the good for the domestic, perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Nina, would you be so kind as to repeat the layers of your pot holder one more time, please? I sure. The directions, sure. but just to share how you layered up, please. I had my uh, back, the back of my pot holder, and then the insole fleece, and I had the shiny side down, then a piece of warm and natural, the insole fleece with the shiny side up, and then my pieced nine patch um, face up on the top of that. So that's a lot of layers. Pardon? Go ahead. Please. It is. Mm -hmm. But the Bernina has a nice DC motor. It's going to go right through yeah. the layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now yeah. you say shiny side is basically facing the wrong side of your fabric that is your pot holder. Correct. Yeah. It's shiny always yes. it's always facing out. It's mm -hmm. you know, whatever the side. Mm -hmm. Okay, kind of like your tin foil. The shiny, yes. the shiny side reflects the heat. So don't put that on the hook. Hook, I love your analogy. What's a kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is rare, the rare spotting in my kitchen that I'm there. <laughs> Underneath. Um, let's see. Oh, the marking pens, they saw lines on your fabric and are wondering oh. what kind of pens do you use? What kind of markers? And I didn't mention that. Uh, when I have to mark my quilt, because there is marking involved with ruler work more than you might think. Uh, if I can use at all because of the color of the fabric, uh, my go-to marker is Taylor's chalk and white Taylor's chalk would be the one I would use. I'm a little bit nervous about the colored chalks. Um, I'm never quite sure. I've heard horror stories of things not coming out. So um, white Taylor's chalk would be my first choice. If I need something else because I'm working on light fabrics, then I will use um, a water soluble marker. And my preference is the Soline Styla marker with a ceramic tip. That seems to put less ink into the fabric. And then of course you would remove that with water. Thank you, thank you. Nina, do you have rulers? Do I have rulers? Do you well, have not? I know you have a whole <laughs> plethora that you just store and save every time you do a new quilt show. You're walking out with new, but do you have you designed rulers? I, I personally am working on a line of rulers. Um, yes, 
So I can't tell you any more than that. <laughs> only that I, I hope to, in the future, um, have my line of rulers available. There used to be a phrase, I think it was, she who has the most machines wins. Is it yeah. now she who has she or who has the most rulers wins? Yeah, could be. <laughs> uh, now, Nina, how would you use the echo disks on the with the ruler? Um, how would those be incorporated? I love, love the echo clips. Uh, of course, when you use your ruler foot, you are echoing the ruler uh, a quarter of an inch away. If you use the clips, you can echo the ruler half an inch away, um, three quarters of an inch away, and an inch away. So if you are doing a curve, we all know that if we take that curve and we move it, it the curve isn't exact. You can't echo an exact curve when you move it. So if you use an echo clip, you get that exact echo. Sometimes when things, I don't have the right size of curve or the right size design of a ruler that's going to fit where I want it to, I find that if I use an echo clip and make it a little bit bigger, it fits. Um, so, so I really love the echo clips and I actually in the Ruler work so along, do use the echo clips in one of those um, designs. Well, I had someone say, boy, it's a lot less expensive to buy the echo clips than it is to buy four or five different with rulers. But, <laughs> you know, as I said, she and who has the most rulers is going to win. <laughs> and, and when you really get into it, I think you'll find if you have those different sizes, you just open up your options. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think that's pretty much the questions that we have. I don't see any more coming in. Nina, always wonderful information you share. Always wonderful information. And folks, there are additional webinars always at our fingertips. So just check back on the Learn and Create spot for our website. Nina has amazing information. If you have never had the chance to spend time with her in person at the show, one day we'll be back at shows again, I hope. And we won't have to do everything virtually, but until that day comes, we're glad that you're here with us. So Nina, thank you so much. And thanks to all thank of you, our Jenny. guests out there for spending the afternoon with us. And thank you, Jenny. Nina. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day, folks. Yeah. Bye now. Bye-bye.